Okay, so uh, I, I guess you wanted me to just uh, tell a little bit about myself, and no. obviously I don't, uh, you know, have 10 or 12 years in the state legislature. I'm not a uh, politician. Um, I'm also not interested, 100% honestly, in um, a career in politics. Um, and I say that because I am um, in favor of term limits for all elected office. Um, and the reason I say I'm in favor of term limits is because I believe that without real campaign finance reform and without real redistricting reform, the vote is not really in the hands of the people. And my position on that is not about, um, is not about party. I believe that um, both, uh, both the Senate and the Assembly uh, use redistricting and obviously the rules on campaign finance to their benefit to get reelected. Um, there is a reason that our state legislature has been nicknamed and labeled the most dysfunctional legislature uh, in the country. Um, so I like to I like to just start and say that I'm not interested in a career in politics. What I am interested in is securing the ability for my family and the family of many other people that have lived in the Hudson Valley to stay here. And I am personally concerned that that is not going to continue. Um, I'm a certified financial planner. I'm self-employed. Um, my husband is self-employed. We live on land. You know, I know Mr. Cahill's family has a long history in Ulster County and in Kingston, certainly far longer than, than my family does. That you know, We live on land that's been uh, in the family, the Yes family, since 1921. My daughters are the fifth generation living on that land. Um, my husband and I have seen our total property tax bill, and I'm a Again, I'm a CFP. Every year my taxes come in, I add them on a spreadsheet. That total tax bill, since we were able to construct our home on the family property in 1999, has increased 142%. This is a fact, and I'm happy to show everybody my little spreadsheet that I've created. This is, you know, to me, it's, it's unfathomable. unfathomable. It's, it, it's totally unreasonable. But... I also see that this is the reason in my professional practice where I see clients from Ulster and Dutchess County why many of these people have to say, we're going to be living on a fixed income, we have to relocate, we have to leave. So we have people leaving the area and we have young people, like I look at it from my kids and I know Mr. Cahill has children, I don't know how old they are, but my two daughters are 14 and 12 and I look at the prospects for them to be able to work and make a living in this region as next to impossible. So I'm, I'm actually sitting here saying, are my children going to have to live here and live in my house because they can't afford to rent a place, they can't get a job, they certainly can't buy a place. Well, we'll see what happens in the next <laughs> six months with the housing market. Um, so I, I view you know, our, our tax system as problematic in, in many ways. Um, not only on the burden of, of homeowners and businesses, but all of the other taxes that we stick on, on businesses and basically encourage them to leave um, or, or set up shop elsewhere. So uh, I think that the, the, the taxing and the spending philosophies that we have have got to change. And where I say, you know, sometimes it's just looking at things from a common sense standpoint, and I, I talked a little bit about this while sitting in the, uh, in the lobby, that every individual in this region has to look at their budget. I do it with all my clients. Here's a simple budget form. If you're telling me you can't, you can't make ends meet, then we're going to start from square one, and we're going to put th things in the column that are the needs and the wants. And I understand that the you know, New York State government has many, many, many layers and many, many, many divisions. But I think we have to, in this critical time of we're going broke, is we have to go back to zero-based budgeting, which says we may have implemented departments and divisions and started, started little groups within the government and different agencies. We may have to say, are these viable? 
can we afford them? And the point that, yes, we do have to look at cutting back on spending, on hiring. I said, you know, one of the recent numbers I looked at says we have one public sector job for every five private sector jobs. Something's wrong with that number. I mean, ha- you know, we have too much government. We can't afford it. Government doesn't generate revenue for us other than by taxing the people. 